watched over us. Yesterday, my wife and I and um, Walter and Nook had an opportunity to travel to Portsmouth, Virginia. On the way back on uh, Interstate 95 South, there was a major accident that backed us up like an hour. And we talked about it a little bit because we stopped at Wendy's, but Wendy's wouldn't serve us because they did the only drive-in and it was a long line. So we went to KFC. And then after coming from KFC, we saw the firemen and the fire trucks going by. And they said, man, we could have been stuck in that accident. I said, no, more than that, we could have been the accident only by the grace of God. So that's why we're here this morning, because God's grace kept us. When you stand to your people, I'll call the worship. For the Bible says, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth stand still and be silent. And know I'm God. For I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. You may be seated for our invocation. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in this place. We thank you for rescuing us and saving us and keeping us by the grace of God. And so, God, while we're here, would you be in our midst? Meet our needs according to your riches and glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we bring light into the sanctuary. It's a symbol. It represents the presence of God. We bow to the cross in reverence of the Savior who gave his life for us on it. We light two candles. The candle on the right represents Jesus who came in human form. Born of a virgin named Mary. The candle on the left represents Jesus who came as the only begotten Son of God. And so here's what we believe. We believe that God sent his Son in human form, but he was still God in being fully God and yet being fully human to die on the cross that we might have eternal life. So as we light the two candles, we say, Lord Jesus, be with us in this place as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Would you join us in singing our opening hymn? You'll find it. It's hymn number 35. Hymn number 35. Now, it was written by a guy named Charles Wesley. Charles Wesley is the brother of John Wesley, who is the founder of the Methodist Church. Okay? And Charles and John and a couple other guys had this little group. They call it, they call them the Holy Club. And he was in a college in Oxford, and what they would do is that John Wesley and Charles Wesley would do things in a certain order until they decided they would call them Methodists because they did things a certain way. They had a certain method for doing things. Well, Charles Wesley was um, converted in 1737, and on the anniversary of his conversion, his, his conversion in um, his Christianity in 1738, he wrote the hymn, O oh, 4,000 Tongues to Sing. My great redeemer's praise. Well, later on in 1888, a man by the name of Ralph Hudson took those same words, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, and he added this phrase, blessed be the name of the Lord. And so you might ask, well, preacher, where is blessed be the name of the Lord found in the Bible? If you would go to Psalm 113, verses 3 and 5, it says these words, blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. That's what we've gathered today to do. We've gathered to praise his name. Would you join us by singing hymn number 35 in your blue hymnals? Hymn number 35, Blessed Be the Name. May we stand as we sing to the honor and glory of God.
Bible, Jonas and I are, are responsive reading. It's found in the back of your hymnal on the first page 44. The back of your hymnal, the first page 44. The back of your hymnal. And actually, it's the second page 44. <laughs> it's the second page 44, okay? There are two sets of 44s in your hymnal. One is deals with rituals, and this one, the second page 44, is in the fourth Sunday morning after Pentecost. Now, and as you find it, um, Pentecost, of course, is the, the period when God sent the Holy Spirit on the disciples. They were all in the upper room, and they were all on one accord. And the Holy Spirit came and it spoke to them in the mushing and riding wind. Well, and as we celebrate Pentecost, um, you'll note that in this passage, okay, Peter and they, they run into a situation where they're saying to the church, saying, saying to the people that are coming to Christ, hey, you need to be circumcised. You need to be like an Israelite. You, you need to have your foreskin skins. You need to have certain rules. And he talks about the idea of like sometimes in churches you have so many rules and regulations before people think they can come to the Lord. And so Peter says something really critical in here, and I'm going I'm to pause when we read that because I want you to hear it clearly. All right? You on page 44? You got it? If you got it, just kind of wave your hand a little bit. If you got it, just wave your hand. Make sure I see if you don't have it. If you don't have it, find a book then. It's on page 44, the second page 44. And here's the scripture from Acts chapter 15. Verse 1, and then verses 6 through 11. May we read responsibly. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, watch, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago, God chose among us that by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Now watch, God gave them the Holy Spirit because they knew how to shout. God gave them the Holy Spirit because they could sing good. God gave them the Holy Spirit because they wore a robe and looked handsome. God gave them the Holy Spirit because they were members of a church. God gave them the Holy Spirit because they did good works. Huh? Hello? God gave them the Holy Spirit because um, they came down the aisle, hollering and screaming and shouting and all that. No. Watch. Look at it says again. God because God knows their what? Wow. And according to them, he gave them the Holy Spirit just as he did us. And made them no distinction. Watch. Between us and them. Purifying their hearts by faith. Now watch this passage. Now therefore, Peter says, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples? which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Why do you, why do you pressure people to say, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to make sure you get this right, get this right, don't get, you know, why? Why put all that pressure on folks when our fathers didn't do it, God didn't do it? Wow. So look at the last page. Let's read together. Ready? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Now, you ought to give God some praise for that, man. What a mighty God. Yes, sir. So now we sing, glory be to the Father and to the Son. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be. World without it. Amen. Amen. 
may be seated. Amen. Our, our scripture lesson this morning is going to be Psalm 113. I shared a portion of it with you already. Psalm 113. Because as I said earlier, we know it was sung when we came in um, that we were here this morning by grace. And then Peter reminds them that we were saved by grace. Okay? It's not good works. It's not deeds. It's not efforts. It's not how much I know or how much I don't know. It's that God loved us so much that he would give his life that we might have eternal life. So I'll be reading for you the 113th Psalm. And in following the 113th Psalm, um, Brother Ronnie will be leading us in prayer. So let's pray. Let's hear the scripture. Psalm 113 is in your Bibles and the pews. You'll find it on page 426. 426. And here's what the psalmist says. 426. The Bible's in your pew. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. The Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations. His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? Who dwells on high? who humbles himself behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap that he may seat, seat him with princesses and with princes of his people. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. That's in the reading of the scripture. Psalm 113 in its entirety. Amen. How many know the Lord? He's worthy to be praised. Just a little bit of the song while we, before we pray, praise him. Praise Praise him, praise him, Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy, he's worthy to be praised. Father God, we come before you this morning, we thank you for just allowing us to wake up, to have the activity of us of our limbs to be enclosed in our right minds. It's no goodness of our own that we're here today, but it's because of your mercy and your grace that you have spared us another time that we're able to come and bless your name. We're able to come and worship you. We're able to come and clap our hands. We're able to come and just exalt your name. God, you are worthy to be praised. God, we thank you for carrying us through another week, and now we are facing another week. And God, we ask you to give us what we need, that we may be able to stand in this evil time, and this evil day. God, bless this service. Bless the man of God. Feed our spirits, feed our soul, and our minds, that we may be able to continue in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He's worthy. He's worthy to be from the rising of the sun, from the rising of the to the going down of the same.
share just a few of the announcements with you. Of course, you know today is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers in the audience. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a few moments. May God continue to bless you. Um, we also notice the announcements will come up in a minute. I'm pulling them up now. All right. Um, happy Father's Day today. Yep, yep. Said that earlier. Golly. That cellular phone will lose it right away, especially when you get in front of people and all that. There we go. Got it. All right. Um, tomorrow, of course, is Juneteenth. So we were celebrating Juneteenth, that first official um, day to celebrate as a holiday, official holiday. So we're excited about that. That'll be tomorrow. We offer Christian sympathy to, again, Miss Patricia Green and family in the loss of their um, nephew, Kenneth Davis. And they'll have a memorial service here later on um, during the summer. We've been blessed to have been asked to host a boys' summer camp, a podcasting summer camp for boys 11 to 17. We'll have about 15 young men here who will be learning how to do podcasting. Um, they'll be learning how to work cameras and all those kinds of things. It's going to start tomorrow. It'll be here from June 19th through July the 17th. And that's from um, 10 to 2 o'clock. The, the district mass meeting, of course, is this Saturday. It will be here. It's the Beyond the Walls mass meeting. They'll be hosted here at Warner. It starts at 10 o'clock. So we encourage all of our missionaries and, of course, all of you to come and be a part of the missionary mass meeting. On Monday, tomorrow, the Juneteenth celebration, we'll be celebrating a breakfast at the MLK Center. The cost is of $30 for adults, $15 for children, and that's tomorrow from 9.30 to 11.30. Then on tomorrow night, they have a movie night, uh, Ruby Bridge, Bridges, and that will be at the MLK Center as well from 5 to 7. And then the last thing at the MLK Center, or another thing is the Miss Juneteenth pageant, which will be Sunday the 25th at 2 p.m. at the MLK Center. And then, of course, we're reminding you that we want people to be a part of the, this, the annual conference choir, which will happen in October. But there are two rehearsal dates, June the 29th, Thursday, and that'll be at St. Luke, and then Thursday, July the 27th, and that'll be at Somerville. Um, please note, we are um, trying to offer a music class you know, for kids to learn how to play the piano, learn to play chords. Um, the class is going to be on Thursdays at 5 o'clock. We have a permission slip, and we have a sign-in sheet. There's one in the back, and there will be one in the office. If you're interested, please make sure that you sign up so that you can be a part of that. We continue to encourage you to be a part of our um, celebration of burning our mortgage. That's going to happen on October the 15th. We have pledge cards as well as, as, well as letters that you might want to share with friends and family, and they're in the back as well. It's good to see all of you. Would you turn around and just give you, not turn around, but go look to the side of you and just kind of wave at the people next to you and just kind of make them smile or something? Can you do that just for a moment? Tell them it's good to see you. All right. Thank you. Now, if you're, a ch if you're under 18, under 18, come forward. Come quickly, children. Quickly, 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 quickly. Quickly, come on up, come on up, come on up. Wow. Under 18 and not married. Whoa, don't be able to me like that. Good morning. I like you guys' hats. Good morning. Ooh. Oh, you're killing me. Good morning. Where you been, boy? How are you? Good? All right. Is that all 18? Children under 18? Thank you guys for being here. Good morning. Hold on, I'll try it again. Good morning. How are you guys? Um, what's today? 
Father's Day. Did anybody say Happy Father's Day to their fathers today? Anybody say it yet? You did? Good for you. You're good for you. Okay. I, I want to tell you two things, and I'm going to need you to help me with something, okay? Number one, um, the first thing I want to just tell you a little bit about is that you are, we are lucky to have dads and fathers, people in our lives who, who help us, especially men, okay? We're really blessed to have them. And so um, make sure that you love them and you tell them thank you, okay, when you get a chance, okay? And then the second thing I need you to help me with today is I've got a gift for all of our fathers. So if, if you are a father or a, like an uncle or cousin and then, you know, stepping as the father and all that, would you please stand up? Would you please stand? If you're a father, would you please stand? If you're a father. Okay, now, and then what I need you to help me do is I want you to help me to give them one of these. Okay, and it reads... Um, Acts, it says popping in to say Happy Father's Day. Okay, so can you make sure you take take one and give them to the, give them to one of the people standing up. Okay, you ready? Oh, sorry about that. Take a couple, take a couple so you can. And there's some people standing up. You got a couple? You want to pass out a couple? All right, there you go. Take them and pass them out for me. Can you? There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Pass them out for me. Pass them out. Pass them out. Here, here's some more. There you go. Take a couple of them. Ain't enough there? All right. Here you go. In here. On that side, too. All right. Woo! Hey, Harold. Here you go. There's some more people there. Here you go. Help me out. Good helpers. Good helpers. Take two. Take two. There was somebody over there. See over there? You see some more? Hold on. Right over there? There you go. How about all the way in the back? See all the way in the back? <laughs> the ones in the back? All right. Well, okay. Well, all right. Every day I get one. Every day. All right. Okay. Good job. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Good helpers. Awesome helpers. Okay. Boom. Thank you. All right. Stand right here for me. You did really great. Now, the last thing. Thank you, man. Good job. Everybody got one. All the dads. All right. Oh, I didn't get one. Yeah! I forgot. Thank you. I almost forgot. Thank you. Okay, now, the last thing I want to tell you real quick is that if you, like, whatever you look for, you find. Okay, if you look around and stuff. And so one of the things I want you to work on is I want you to work on being a good helper, okay? Helping people and doing the best you can to help folks, okay? And that God loves you, and he's our Heavenly Father, and our dads love you, our uncles, our cousins. We love you, and we want great things happening for you, okay? So let's pray. Father, thank you for all of the dads in our lives. We thank you for the part that they've played to make us who we are. And they'll continue to play to make us more like you. Now, God, I pray that you bless our children. Hold them in the palm of your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay? Now, there's a song I sing. It's called Jesus Loves Me. Help me sing it. Ready? One, two, ready, go. Jesus loves me, this I know. Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is.
This morning, um, I've asked Brother Alan Bernard to bring our Father's Day message. Um, he said, uh, Pastor Barnett, please don't let me have to sit in the pulpit because, you know, I, I get nervous when I sit in the pulpit. But he's going to come forward in a few moments. And so you can come now, Alan. Come on now. You, 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 you. I asked him to share... Because, you know, we've heard a lot about his granddaughter, but also asked him to share more importantly because he does this crazy thing. We have a Bible study on Wednesdays, and driving home oftentimes from work, he would get on Bible study. Um, he shows up at Sunday school. Um, he studies his word daily, and I'm just excited about all that God is doing in his life, and I've asked him to present to us um, a Father's Day message. So following uh, the message from the, the song from the choir, the next voice we will hear a bit of our speaker of the hour, um, Brother Alan Bernard. And as he comes, would you pray that God will use him to do what God has assigned him to do, that he be, he, he'll be who he is and that he might um, represent the kingdom.
Good morning, church. It's like sunlight up here. First, I just want to give honor to God for allowing me to be here today. And once again, allowing me to address the church. Um, the pastor has called upon me to uh, give a message in various occasions. And when he called me this time, I tried to get out of it. But in the same token, I, I was compelled to do it because... If God told him to pick me, uh, then I wanted to be a servant. So I, I thank you. I thank you all for receiving me this morning. Um, <clears throat> my voice may be a little, little crackly because um, my wife had me cooking brisket all night. <laughs> and not only that, um, several members of the trustees decided to uh, burn some grass over in Brunswick County and... I won't mention Larry and Lloyd's name, but um, <laughs> the ashes on your vehicles, you can attest that to them, okay? Um, <clears throat> once again, thank you, sir, for uh, allowing me to do this this morning. <sighs> Addressing the topic of fatherhood is something I have had the privilege of experiencing over the last 28 years of my daughter's life. Warner Temple holds a special place in my life. You see, on 15 June of 1991, I stood here on this altar. I looked at the back of the church, down the aisle, and the doors opened, and this beautiful woman came through, came up the aisle to join me. She's been by my side for the last 32 years. And I just want to take a moment. I want to take a moment to recognize her because um, she's my rib, uh, my companion, and a couple other things. But I won't say that. We're in the church. Okay. Can I get an amen? <clears throat> Man, as a matter of fact, I was so excited that day that um, some of you were here. I think Ms. Green was here. Hey, Ms. Green. <laughs> I think she was here, and she may remember that I was, I was so excited that I forgot my own name. <laughs> I, I loudly announced, I, Angelina. <laughs> and she, she doesn't let me forget that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> The message I present today isn't just for men in the audience. And should the words hit close to home, it's okay to get up, clap, dance. For your men, you can take your coat off and swing it around your head. <clears throat> More importantly, don't leave. So as we are gathered here today to recognize the special men of our life, I ask once again that the fathers in the audience please stand and remain standing for a moment. The word according to Matthew 5, 14, 16 presents that you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the home. Let your light so shine before men that they may see you, your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Those are words to live by as you seek your purpose in life. You stand among many fathers who have gone this way before us. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause, applause for the gentleman standing here today. <laughs> you may be seated, gentlemen. When we think of fathers, I'd be negligent if I didn't acknowledge the presence of the Father Almighty in my life. 
God's example of fatherly love has been presented throughout biblical history. Think of Adam, the first humanly father, Abraham, David, and Job, all men of high character and men of God. Today, I'd like to focus on Joseph and a few of his attributes. What an example. As a father, there are three factors I strive to uphold as it applies not only to my wife, but also to my daughter. Acceptance, accountability, and availability. Bear with me for a few minutes as I present my points of concern. <coughs> the gentlemen that stood, stood before us come from different walks of life. Some of these gentlemen are husbands, while some may be approaching the step of matrimony to coincide with the title of parent. My question to every parent is, do you recall receiving a manual on parenthood, specifically fatherhood? Ephesians 4.2 states that we should always be humble and gentle, be patient and accept each other with love. It's about establishing a legacy. Joseph was the earthly father of Jesus Christ. Now prior to marriage, Mary became pregnant through the Holy Spirit and not through Joseph. An angel appeared to Joseph and commanded him not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife. <clears throat> the Bible also indicates that Joseph was a kind, self-sacrificing man. Though he had a legal right to divorce Mary when he found out she was pregnant, he intended to do so quietly because he did not want to bring any public shame or disgrace on Mary or her family. Joseph accepted the conditions set before him, orchestrated by God. Many among us have witnessed a similar scenario. By show of hands, who does not want to be accepted in some way? Everyone craves acceptance. It seems we never get enough. However, Galatians 1.10 challenges us not to seek the approval of human beings. Aim to please God. Amen. This is not easy for children to comprehend. They expect that they're going to be accepted. Besides, they didn't ask to come here. My background is an often heard of story. Having grown up in a single-parent home, my memories of the short period of growing up in the home with my father are limited. Most of the memories created at an early age were absent the presence of my fa father. As I grew older, I admired the relationship of friends and their fathers. I consciously made an agreement with myself that I would be available to my child should God gift me with the title of father. I've committed myself to being the best husband I could be. As Angie and I journeyed together in love and happiness, God blessed us with a gift, the gift of a loving daughter by the name of Peyton Antonia Bernard. And if you're looking, Peyton, I love you. Men, do you remember receiving the news from your significant other that you would become a father? What a moment of emotions. I can still remember the joy I experienced. However, once the news truly sets in, you quickly realize that receiving the title and role of father is a game changer. It is at that time that you realize you will not only be accountable to provide for your wife, but also the child. Your responsibility to the child will now take priority in each of your lives. Tough responsibility. However, Psalms 37.5 challenges us to depend on the Lord. 
Trust in him, and he will help you. The welcoming environment of acceptance is the atmosphere in which kids bloom. When you give your children the opportunity to, to be themselves and to become what God wants them to be, you give them a great legacy. And besides, they're your children. Now, acceptance isn't always automatic. Parents must be intentional in offering it and continue showing it. Joseph adhered to God's guidance and became accountable for the welfare of Mary and baby Jesus. As a father, you're accountable for the growth of your child or children. It's been said that it's not so much about the big moments of life, but what you do daily that matters and makes the biggest difference with your children. Would anyone agree? <laughs> Knowing how powerful your words are to your child, make it a priority to speak life over them every day. There's four things to consider. If you don't tell your children often, begin to take the step to tell them you love them and that you are proud of them. If you are the kind of dad who showers on praise, don't stop. Anytime you have a chance, tell your children how special and important they are to you. As a matter of fact, if they're by you right now, go ahead on and lean into them. I saw one do it over there. Ask your children questions about their day and learn to listen to them more and hear their heart. It's not, you're not being intrusive. You're demonstrating a genuine interest. Some of you are leaders in your job. You check into your employees. Why not your child? If you have spoken to them harshly and said things you regret, almost nothing is powerful as an apology. This doesn't excuse you to continue losing your temper, but apologizing is always a good idea. Dads, know that God has given you the high and holy responsibility of raising your kids. And he has given you a tremendous influence in their lives by your words, actions, and attitude toward them. As a father, it was important to me to create an environment of trust within the household. Demonstrating what right looks like to your child is extremely important to their growth. Our children are watching our actions just as we are watching theirs. As fathers, demonstrate what right looks like in a manner that your child will want to emulate. It's easy to make bad choices. Think of the many fathers whom, because of their choices, are no longer in the life of their children. The best ability is availability. <clears throat> Whatever Joseph's particular vocation was, it was evident that he worked hard to provide for his family, doing what he could to help Jesus grow in wisdom and stature. As we are faced with providing for our family, the absence of any parent from the home can present challenges. When we think of the ways we provide for our family, it pales in comparison to what God can provide. As we make ourselves available to our children, love is the most important word that can be expressed. Love is often displayed through actions. Children spell love T-I-M-E, time. Give them time. While the demands to succeed are many, if it is one thing that is hard to replace, is time. Giving time to family is of great importance. I recall um, in 2012, um, I was standing outside with my daughter, and I had to break, to break the news to her that I was going to deploy once again. Uh, not for six months this time, but for a year. And her immediate response was, 
that's not fair. I made a promise to her that I would be back for her graduation because that's what was important to her. Fortunately, three months into my deployment, I met the threshold to come back, to leave the combat zone. I had a week to travel to get home. And for those military members who have deployed, you know the challenges that returning home can present. I prayed all the way back that we would not be delayed, that flights would not be canceled. And I literally made it back a day and a half prior to her graduation. But I needed to prove to her that if she needed me, as she knew, that I would be there for her. <clears throat> and if, even to this day, I'll continue to do whatever is required to be there for her, as Angie will attest to. And it's not just for Peyton, but she knows for her as well. And make sure I get that in. My role as a father was to demonstrate my love of my wife in a manner that would allow my daughter to know what love looked like. I also showered Peyton with love by being there for her. A daughter-daddy date was not out of the norm. Backyard soccer and driveway basketball. It was typically filled with laughter, some wrestling, and some teachable moments. We often reflect on those moments when we are together to this day. The memories created by being available to your child will last a lifetime. It takes commitment and trusting in God to aid in being the best example to your kid that you can be. I see fathers out here in the audience, and I, I watch them as they come into church and how they interact with their, their kids, uh, Mike Grison and his kids. Um, I watch fathers and listen to them as they communicate with each, with others, Larry and, and, uh, and Lloyd back in the back, um, and not to forget Carl. <clears throat> Fitting examples of men, men with high character, men with a moral compass, that is fitting for their kids to want to emulate. <clears throat> In closing, the Bible provides the blueprint to being the best version of yourself. The single greatest factor determining whether a child succeeds in life or messes up is the presence and acceptance of a caring adult in his or her life. It doesn't have to be a parent it must be someone who offers love, acceptance, accountability, and godly guidance. Fathers, I applaud each of you in your efforts to be the best man you can be for your family and in the eyes of God. So, take the popcorn that was passed out to you today. Go home, enjoy your day. And may it be a peaceful Father's Day to each of you. Thank you, church. We thank God for the message. And we thank God for the messenger. And the challenge is, as he mentions, is... Then we got to model it. We got to live it. You know, you got to you got to do it. It's 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 simple. You you know the Nike commercial. You've got to just do it. You've got to do it. So we thank God for again the message, and we thank God for the messenger. If by chance you're here, and maybe you didn't realize that you're that Matthew person when he says that you're to let your light shine. Maybe you were thinking, well, they're talking about somebody else. No, no, he's talking about each of us. That God desires that we let our light shine. Not 
force it, not push it, but that you just show up. See, the crazy thing about light is that wherever light is, it will do light stuff. You got me? If I place a lamp here, it's going to do what the lamp does. It's going to light the area where it is. And so God requires that us just light where we are. You know, that you be the light where you are. And if by chance you're here and today you hear his voice, and you want to surrender your life to him and say, yes, God, I want to be a light where I am. I'd love for you to come. Or if by chance you're here and you've already given your life to the Lord and you want to say, well, let me make this church my church home. We'd love for you to come because we need more light. We need more people to represent him where they go. And then lastly, if by chance you've got a prayer request, we'll love to pray with you and pray for you. Okay. So as the choir sings, would you stand to your feet for a moment? And as you stand, would you stand and maybe God is speaking to your heart and God is saying, yeah, today's the day. Today is the day I want to surrender my life to him. Maybe, maybe as you're standing where you are, you, you might be considering the thought, well, you know, I really haven't been shining like I ought to. I've, I've been kind of trying to take my light and hide it. The Bible says under a bushel. You know, you try to hide it and pretend. No, God wants us to be on the candle stand. He wants our light to shine. Would you come? Then let's pray. Would you bow, would you bow your heads? And before you bow your heads, would you join hands with the person next to you? For just a moment. As a matter of fact, you can look at that person and say, hey, is there anything you want me to pray with you about? Is there anything? Talk to them for a moment. Just say, hey, is there, is there something you want me to whisper to God about for you? Is there a child? Is there a situation? Is there a circumstance? Um, do you, maybe, maybe you just want to squeeze that hand and in so doing, maybe you're saying just... Pray for me. Mm. God, here we are. We love you, God, because you first loved us. We love you, God, because you were willing to give your son that we might have eternal life. We love you, God, because you not only gave your son, but you went to the grave and you got up from the grave and you went on to glory and you sent back the Holy Spirit that he might live in us right now. So God, we do say thank you. We, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, God, for being with us and in us and through us. And we pray, God, that you will make us the persons that you desire us to be. My mama would pray, God, build us up where we're torn down and strengthen us where we're weak. God, we ask that you help us to be the dads and the moms and the sons and daughters that, that you've called us to be. God, we pray that you'll help us to be more loving, more kind, and we'll be more and more like you. God, we thank you for the dads in our lives, those who showed up and were available and those who are accessible and those who are accountable. God, we thank you. We even thank you, God, for the dads that didn't always hang around. But God, we thank you anyhow because if it hadn't been for him, we, may, we wouldn't even be here. And so, God, we thank you for dads that are going astray. And we pray, God, if it be your will, would you turn them around before it's everlasting too late? God, we pray for children that have been scarred and children that are struggling even right now. But God, would you remind them that you are still faithful, that you will still carry them through. And then, God, I thank you for the dads in this audience. God, I thank you for each one of us that, that God, we will do and we'll try to do the best we know how to do. God, forgive us for mistakes. Forgive us for falling short. 
forgive us for not always reaching the mark. But God, what I love about you is that you keep trying us over and over and over and over again. And so we say thank you, God. Thank you for those who have been our helpmate. And our Adam, I mean, Alan called it my rib. Thank you, God, for those you've placed in our lives who will help us to raise our children. And then lastly, my Father, we lift up children to you this morning. As I squeeze the hand of the person I'm holding, I pray for their children and their children's children. I pray, God, that you'll continue to protect them. I pray, God, that you'll continue to watch over them. I pray, God, that you'll keep all the negative stuff away and the bad things away. I pray, God, that you be a fence around them. I pray, God, that by your power and by your might, God, that you hold them in the palm of your hands. I pray, God, that when the enemy comes at them, they might know that they're covered by the blood of the Lamb. I pray, God, that you'll watch them. You'll keep them. You'll hold them. You'll sustain them, God. That they might become the people that you've desired them to be. Lord, we thank you for what you've already done. And we thank you for what you are doing. And we forever will give your name the praise. For it's in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Our soul says, Amen. God bless you. May be seated. Again, we thank God for the message, and we thank God for the messenger, and we pray that all of you might have a great and a, a blessed um, Father's Day. I did, I did receive two um, thank you notes. One was from the family of uh, Mrs. Palmer. She, um, her brother was funeralized here last week, and they gave me a note. It was in a blue envelope, and it's somewhere in the building. So she just wanted me to tell you all thank you. But I did get two, I get, did, got two thank you notes, and I found one. Um, the second thank you note is from Sierra and Sashan, and they're saying thank you to the Warner Temple Church family for the gift of kindness. And they're um, two of our graduates who um, we celebrated last year, last week. Amen. Amen. Both hearts and minds are clear. We're ready for our session.
want to know him because they bumped into me. God, thank you for the privilege to serve you. Thank you for the privilege to come to a church and be charged up again, to be renewed, to be filled with spirit again so that we can go out and change the world for you, so that we can go out and make a difference where we are, so that we can go out and live a life so that others may be drawn to you. That's the goal, God. It's not just to come here, but the goal is, God, that when we gather here, when we leave this place, we might go home and live a better life. And now unto him today, he's able to keep you from falling, yes. tough to you. And he's able to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. Yes. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, how long, both now and forevermore. Thank <laughs> you.